instincts from the poster boy. Black kid who overcame his tragic past. You really don't like her, do you? Okay, what about a responsibility to tell the truth? What? For me, I grew up in the South, in New Orleans, and I went to a really exclusive private school, and it, you know, I walked in, and I was like, it was me, Odell Beckham, two other black people, and, you know, the first thing they told me was like, we say yes here, not yeah. And I was like, copy that. And they were like, you know, what do your parents do? And I was like, I've never had to think about these things, mm -hmm. or I've never ha felt like I had to maybe adjust or change to be a part of the, the environment they've already established. And so that was the personal part of like Luce's journey coming from um, a war-torn country into America, trying to figure out how do I fit in. Mm -hmm. And that was, that, that, was, that was the closest thing I kind of had to, yeah. to, to this experience. Yeah, I mean that fish out of water experience was one I had too. I was born in Nigeria, mm -hmm. moved to America at 10 as an immigrant, lived in Arlington, Virginia, had gone through a very difficult, long immigration process at one point where I was undocumented. So that 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 experience of not being sure who you are and how you fit in was something I very much so related to. Isn't there a chance that what he wrote has went over your head? I can tell the difference between miscommunication and provocation. Like get out. Writing something like that might make someone freaked out. You really think I believe that stuff? I don't know. It's got to be tough to kind of approach a character like this, where there's so much ambiguity. Do you guys have to have conversations? Is there more that you maybe know about Luce than what we see as an audience? Or, um, I mean, as an actor, I had the privilege of having Julius, who yeah. also <laughs> was directing and wrote some of the, the script. So it's like uh, I had access to all the, the questions that I had and mm -hmm. all the things I didn't know. He would answer them, and he was so nice. He let me take multiple meetings, and we would sit for hours and just talk through every beat, every every every. Thing that isn't shown and make decisions and you know as an actor i had to make some decisions for myself too so there are things that i probably know that me and i not know but yeah. you know yeah yeah i mean look for me this started with a brilliant play that jc lee wrote which is an amazing piece of writing so there were things there that were source materials and then there were things that you know in the adaptation that had to change things that i had to make decisions as a director in terms of what was true for me and you know in the adaptation i wrote the first draft what i did was write a new biography for all these characters from the day they were born to the minute you meet them in the movie so i had made a series of decisions of what i knew was happening but that was never going to be the case for you or anybody else watching the movie Mm -hmm. The movie is about perception. It's about the ways we view each other. It's about the ways power and privilege work. And ultimately, it only works as a movie if you are making your own decisions about what you choose to believe about these people. Well, this had been in development for a little bit, and it was a play prior. The play came out in a different time, really. Were there elements that changed just because of the socio-political climate that we're in right now? No, to no. be 100% honest with you, yeah. we didn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. and other than the actual adaptation from one f medium to another, mm -hmm. the substance of it didn't change. The themes stayed the same. They had to be moved into a different space to work as a movie. They had to be expanded. The story expanded more horizontally and vertically in terms of characters and the amount of plotting. But the critical questions it was asking, those stayed the same. We didn't want to kind of capitalize or be on the bandwagon of, well, this is happening now around race, this is happening around gender. It was critical to stay truthful to these characters, their point of views, and the decisions they made. Um, and the, the thing is, is I think when you are truthful, the story resonates regardless. Mm -hmm. You know, these issues are, are, are issues that we've been dealing with in one way or another since the history of this country was born. You threatened your teacher? I didn't. Loose, don't lie to me. I'm not. Loose. It's the truth. What happened with Miss Wilson? There were a lot of rumors. This woman decided to go after him on some witch hunt. I wanted to ask too real quick about Tim and Naomi because that's another thing we were coming into it with certain expectations. They were both in funny games together. And you mentioned Haneke as an influence before, so I wondered if that was a deliberate. Oh, well, it's it, it was just something that was too hard to resist. You know, Naomi was somebody who I had in mind in the adaptation process. I love her Mulholland Drive. Her work in that yeah. film is incredible. So when we were, you know, we were very fortunate to get Octavia. We were incredibly fortunate to get the amazing Calvin Harrison Jr. Tim was the last piece of the puzzle, and when he became available, and Naomi and him had his history, it was important to have somebody who she could be comfortable with, because they go through some very intense stuff. There's sex scenes, there's things in the movie that like you just want to have somebody where there's trust. Um, 
But then I also could not resist the Haneke connection mm -hmm. because Caché was a big inspiration for me and how I was visualizing, conceptualizing the film. So, you know, them having worked together in that regards, I always would joke to myself, well, this is another, there's another set of funny games that are happening with young people in this movie when you compare it to that film. <laughs> Well, and you went and you went and watched all those films, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, nice. Homework. Yeah. I watched it during the movie. Though. <laughs> Head like, trip for sure. <laughs> this woman's just gone through a mental breakdown. What are you doing? He's lying, Dan. Period. Once you know something, you can't unknow it. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> 